Yes, and the next talk uh, is by Aspas Vadis from Berlin, but originally from Nikuya. Latvia. Latvia. Um, on crystal growth as a challenge for my physics company. Okay, yeah, thank you for the nice introduction. I already uh, said a few words uh, this morning, and now, uh, now I will have it. I will try to give you a better impression of what are the challenges which we have in crystal growth. Uh, so far, my experience with precise is exactly zero, uh, but I'm very interested in, in, in possibilities to solve a couple of problems, uh, which I will introduce to you on the next slides. Okay, so this is an overview of my talk, so I will start with a general introduction about crystal growth and about a specific crystal growth processes, um, because we have uh, several of them. Uh, and then especially about the mountain physics, uh, which we have in this process, I will give you two examples, which we have already had, and I will also discuss the problems which we have with coupling in these cases, and then talk about the general strategy of developing such models, and then conclude. Okay, so let's start about a short introduction of crystal growth, and especially about the motivation for crystal growth. Maybe some of you know, uh, this was the standard kilogram unit, uh, which, were, which was sitting in Paris for uh, many years. Uh, it, it was a, a platinum iridium cylinder which was defined as a kilogram for the cold growth. And this changed last year uh, into this. This is a sphere of, of uh, pure silicon, um, <coughs> which uh, was this material which was also grown at our institute. Uh, and this is a new definition of uh, kilogram unit, which tells us silicon is still very important material, so not only for chips in our smartphones, but also for such uh, metallurgy questions. Uh, another, let's say, future topic for silicon uh, is still quantum computer, because silicon, especially isotopically enriched silicon, is one of the materials which is still in uh, its investigation uh, for use in quantum computers. So I would say the age of silicon uh, is not over yet. And so this is still an important material, and it's important to uh, optimize and investigate the processes how uh, these materials are uh, produced. Okay, so let me introduce to you the floating zone crystal growth process. So what we have at the beginning is this kind of raw material, it's a feed drop, we call this a feed drop, uh, which has a very bad structure, you cannot make any chips uh, with this material, you need to make a crystalline, thin crystalline silicon process. So, so what we are doing at our institute, we put this feed drop into a furnace, which looks like this here in this picture, and then some magic happens, which I will show you on the next slide, uh, and we grow a crystal. So, uh, and in floats on process, uh, I will show you a movie, which you can see when you look through this window, in this furnace, what happens, and I will explain the physics on the following slides. Uh, here you can see the movie, here you have a high frequency inductor, and this inductor is melting the feed drop, which we are pulling down uh, from the top. And here at the bottom, we have a molten silicon drop, a feed drop, which is sitting on the crystal, which is growing to the bottom. So we are shifting from top the feed drop, which is melting, and then we have a crystalline silicon, which is pulled down. So in this way, we obtain a perfect structure here in this solid drive phase. But you can already see this is a very dynamic problem with uh, changing shape of the molten part, with changing uh, shape of the crystal and of the feed drop. And so we need to deal with a lot of physics uh, to understand this problem. But what we get at the end is this kind of perfectly structured crystalline silicon, which can be used for metrology or for microchips and so on. Uh, and this floating zone process, which I just showed you, is one of the several processes, but this is the one which is really needed for high purity uh, and high material perfection applications. Okay, so how about the physical part? So I think you already saw this picture this morning. So this is a short summary. Uh, on this side, you can see what was visible in the movie. And here is uh, an indication of the physical processes which we have here. So of course we have a high frequency inductor here, which is one working at about 3 megahertz. It means very thin skin layers. Um, and this inductor is inducing heat both in this feed drop, which we have as a top, and also in this molten zone, and below the inductor. 
And then we have, of course, heat transfer, heat conduction here uh, in solid parts, also in the melt. We have also heat radiation. In the liquid zone, we have uh, flow of, of the liquid silicon. And of course, we have some stresses also in the solid silicon. So uh, we could say this is a multi-physical problem with complex interactions and also on many time and scales. scales. Um, well, but uh, the basic theory is still <coughs> quite simple. I mean, uh, for heat transfer, you need just heat conduction. You need some special boundary conditions because you have moving phase boundaries uh, for the phase change. For electromagnetic induction, you need to solve the equations for the vector potential. Um, for flow, uh, it's well known that the flux equation is maybe some additional terms for the forces which, is, which are induced by the, uh, uh, by the inductor in the melt. And also some uh, equations for the thermal stress or for the tension on the free surface which we have on the top of the melt. And of course, we have quite a large variety of uh, lengths and time scales from, let's say, a sub millimeter to about one meter, which is the typical size of the furnace. And also on the time scale, uh, we have a fraction of, of, fraction of a second to one hour, where we have some larger changes during the process. Because the process, uh, which I showed you on, on, on the movie, which was just 30 seconds, <coughs> in reality, the process uh, lasts at least a few hours. OK, and uh, the numerical methods are also well known, which we need for this problem, finite elements, new factors for heat radiation, bound elements, finite volumes. And, uh, well, if you look for possibilities to solve this, you can actually uh, find a lot of codes which could be used. I, I did uh, a few years ago a benchmark uh, when I worked for an industrial company to decide which, which code could be used best for such problems. And uh, I think some of these are well known by ANSYS or console or uh, Open phone. Uh, and we have, of course, both, both commercial software, also open source software. Uh, and uh, there is also a workshop for physical growth modeling. Uh, and when you look at the uses of this, uh, these software tools, you can, you can see that actually physical growth uh, developers use quite a lot of tools. Uh, you, you can see these star, stars which indicate popularity in, 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 in many of these cases. Uh, but the, one of the big problems is when you have so many different physical problems, so how can you actually tackle these problems? I mean, because it is not very likely that you will get all the solvers in one of these uh, solvers. And so let me show you two examples how, how such a uh, flow zone with growth process has been modeled. So one of the examples is uh, a special specialized code which has been uh, developed for a long time at the University of Latvia. This is an in-house code uh, which, uh, which gives, of course, you the most flexibility, but which also requires from you the most work uh, because you need to program all this by yourself. And you can see here uh, the uh, coupling scheme, let's say, uh, for this case. So you can see here uh, all, all the physical topics which need to be calculated, the electromagnetic field, the surface, the radiation, the temperature, the flow, and so on. Uh, here you can see some typical geometry, some measures which are, which are used in these calculations, also for the flow, uh, which is here in this liquid zone. Uh, and you can also see here, you really need to calculate all these shapes, because you do not know before what these shapes will be uh, in the reality. So you need uh, to shift these boundaries and, uh, get, to, and, and, and get to a steady set solution. So, uh, when I uh, submitted this, this talk, Benjamin asked me, well, uh, what kind of coupling do you need? So I tried to summarize this in this kind of coupling technology language. So in this case, you can really find all these coupling uh, cases in, in, in this code. So uni and bidirectional surface and volume coupling, transient and steady state, uh, and for all these four or five physical uh, topics and you also need at least these three loops yeah, because you have really four boundaries and you need uh, to do all these loops to get to a steady state at the end. So steady state uh, like here or also like in the movie which I showed you. But the problem with this code uh, is that it's uh, only 2D and it's uh, a private in-house code 
which has been developed exclusively of exclusively for the for the industry, so you cannot really uh, you do not really have an access uh, for the scope. But it is it's still the standard for the kind of simulations. Um, well for the two uh, problems there have been some uh, some developments to extend the scope uh, and uh, they have this group in Latvia they have uh, added some 3D coupling some 3D couplings uh, for example for melt flow uh, they also they also have used open flow uh, for melt flow populations and in this case you also can, can see a quite a complex coupling scheme uh, because you need a lot of uh, 3D calculations, not just the melt flow in 3D. Uh, you also need to calculate the magnetic, magnetic fields, which are important for the melt flow, and therefore you need several 3D tools, and therefore you need these complex uh, data transfer schemes. But in this case, um, it's still a unidirectional coupling, uh, still serves the volume, but also just steady state. Uh, but it was implemented in a quite simplified way with basically text files, so I think here is still a lot of room for improvements in the future for this kind of 2D, 3D coupling. Yeah, and of course, uh, one of the topics which you cannot solve with this kind of coupling is to go back from 3D to 2D. For example, if the 3D flow is influencing some of these 2D calculations of the thermal problem. Okay, so let me switch uh, to the next example. This is an example of console, uh, where we have tried to implement as much of physics as possible in console uh, of this crystal growth process. In this case, we start uh, with a 3D magnetic field calculation. Uh, and for this, we use the ACDC module in console, uh, which works very well for this problem. And what we get, we get induced heat on boundaries. So this is a surface coupling which we use in this case. And then we switch, uh, uh, we, we transfer these uh, induced heat sources. Uh, of course, we, we need to do a, as a new slab regime first. We transfer this, uh, these sources to a 2D uh, thermal calculation, which you can see in this case. And uh, this calculation works for thermal uh, problems quite well, but when you start moving the boundaries, which you really need to do, then you can see that you uh, run in a in many issues, uh, you can see here on, on, on the shapes, these are calculated uh, motion rates uh, for some of the boundaries, and you can see many discontinuities. And of course, um, they are not so easy to repair in console. So for this case, my feeling is that we also probably, probably need some external routine uh, which will go over the boundaries and on the conditions of the boundaries and do some corrections and calculate maybe some smoothing uh, effects and so on to get this coupled problem working. Uh, so also in this case, I see a lot of uh, possibilities to do this in a better way. Uh, our model in console, we have also extended uh, to, to 3D. Uh, but first, we also try to add the flow uh, in 2D, uh, just to get a feeling how this is working in 2D. And for this, we, we added uh, the fluid flow module in console. Uh, this is also coupling uh, which, which works more or less in console, but it's only two. And uh, therefore we also try to add a coupling for, for open phone, and this is also an unidirectional coupling where we just export the forces uh, and geometry and uh, thermal conditions to open phone. And this has been also done in a different way as flexibiles. And of course uh, here this would be a very interesting case to use uh, for precise uh, to uh, get this coupling uh, done uh, automatically. And in most cases, which you can see here, the coupling is actually done in, uh, on surfaces, not on volume, but mostly on surfaces, because also the heat sources by high frequency induction are induced on surfaces. Okay, so these were two examples. So let me go to the last topic in my presentation. So. Uh, let me talk for a bit about the general strategy for model development. Uh, maybe not just for crystal growth, but in general. So what we have at, at the start, we have reality, and then we need to solve or find the right equations. Yeah? Uh, so the validation step, then we got a physical model, a validated physical model, and then we go to the verification step, which means solving the equations in the right way. Yeah? So this is, I think, 
uh, for example, the couple of issues uh, needed uh, should be solved in this step. Then you have a nice mathematical or numerical model, and then you need, especially if you calculate some industrial phases with, with complex uh, geometries, you need to do benchmarking, and uh, that means solving the equations fast enough so that your boss uh, doesn't lose the patience. So that would be uh, the last step before you have a virtual model. Uh, and what we are doing now uh, for crystal growth, we are uh, trying to look closer <coughs> at the validation step. And uh, we use uh, the concept of model experiments. So let me give you one other example. Uh, what is a model experiment? You maybe know uh, Earth has a magnetic field. And the question is how is this magnetic field produced? There are some theories about this, and one of the uh, most prominent theories is, is that you have a liquid core inside the Earth, which has some special con uh, special convection, some special turbulent convection, and this uh, convection produces a self-amplified magnetic field, which is still, which we can still feel here on the surface. But the question is how can you validate this theory because you cannot look inside Earth. So what people have done here, they have, they have built this kind of model experiment, a sphere, which is filled with liquid metal. And they are trying to do measurements on this sphere. They are trying to scale the physics back and forth and try to get a theory which can be validated on this case. And then they can transfer the physics here and, and look if, if, if this model is working correctly. So this is a, the concept of model experiments. And in this way, you can get a model which is physically correct, which is numerically accurate and which is also computationally efficient yeah, when you complete all these things. And our strategy for crystal growth is now uh, we have this complex furnace which works about 1,500 degrees. And then we do a special specialized design uh, for crystal growth with lower temperatures, smaller sizes, but with the main advantage that we have uh, modern measurement techniques which we can integrate here in this specialized setup because we can't really do any measurements uh, here uh, in this big furnace because it's, you need a high vacuum there, you need high temperatures, and you can't really install much parts in, in this furnace. And this is a topic uh, which we have in a starting grant funded by the DRC, which is starting now in February and for five years. And we will try to develop the next generation of multi-physical models for crystal growth. And we will address all of the five physical topics which I mentioned uh, on the previous slides, uh, such as heat transfer, melt flow, gas flow, thermal stresses, and electromagnetic aspects. These are the five, uh, the five uh, aspects which we will address. And of course, we will uh, do experiments in this setup, which I call multi-validator, to validate all the physics which we need. And of course, at the end, what we need is a couplet model which describes the physics uh, correctly. That's uh, the goal, and uh, we, we are doing this in a new research group for the experiments at the ECAR setup. There is still a PhD position open for simulation, especially, so if you are interested, let me know. Uh, now, let me conclude this talk. So, I, as I told you, uh, the flow from crystal growth process is very challenging uh, for the model to be and uh, although you have many software tools uh, to calculate this, I would say coupling has still many challenges. Uh, and also validation has still many challenges. And for coupling, well, as I told you before, we have a unique bidirectional bi surface volume transient steady state coupling. And we have several physical topics which we need to couple in multiple loops. So that's a challenge which I see for this plus floating zone process. And of course, we, we would also need some coupling to be 2 and 3. But uh, that could be solved in the precise environment. So I'm looking forward to this discussions. Uh, the discussions with you, and I would like to acknowledge my colleagues at the EKZ and also uh, at the University of Latvia for any interesting discussions, and I thank you for your attention. Yeah, thanks a lot for the talk, and yeah, questions or comments or yeah. Or comments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why choosing comms or comms out? Well, console is one of the tools where you have most of the physics already present for electromagnetic or thermal calculations. So there are not so many tools which has all these modules which you need, especially for high frequency electromagnetics. So console was the easiest choice, but uh, 
if you know something better, I would be interested to try. Elmer, okay. maybe? Elmer? So, sorry? Is Elmer possible? Really? Well, uh, I, I have some knowledge about Elmer, but especially for high frequency induction, you would need some special boundary conditions which are yeah. still not implemented. But, oh, no. okay. yeah, but, uh, but it could be a choice, yes. yes. I think so, so you mentioned you use multiple modules to console to represent your cross Yes. Is, it already, uh, is there already an existing like, uh, communication between the consoles? Uh, yeah, so, so console has actually all coupling inside it, so it's basically very easy to set up. Uh, all the data are is transferred automatically. Um, that's a big advantage, and simultaneously it's a big disadvantage because you cannot, as a user, uh, make some fine tuning, uh, you cannot do some corrections on some specific parts of the boundaries, so it's very hard to uh, do this uh, optimization. Uh, you, you, have, you, you, can very, you can very easily start the calculation, but then you run in all the problems which I showed you that the boundaries are diverging and, 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 has, uh, and have some discontinuities, so that is a problem uh, in, in console. Theoretically, all is there. All the coupling is there, but it's simply not sufficient for, for this uh, moving boundary case. Yeah. yeah, so silicon, isn't it that silicon is a semiconductor, of course, and yeah. its um, electrical properties change a lot with temperature? Yeah. Uh, do you have the material data in order to model this? Yes, silicon, okay. sil silicon is investigated, I mean, measured uh, with respect to material properties very well. Yeah. Okay. Um, in, in this case, um, specifically for this case, we mostly need uh, just uh, properties such as elect electrical conductivity just at the melting point because the phase boundary uh, where this uh, heat is induced is very close to the melting point. So in this case, material property dependence on temperature is, is maybe not the biggest problem. But there are some other cases for crystal growth where you also need coupling for uh, temperature-dependent material properties in the volume, and that's, that's even uh, more complicated than But not in this case. Um, in the first example you showed, uh, you showed this open phone solver. Yes, this one. Okay. So <coughs> this on the left side, is this all one open phone solver? No, no. Um, these are two open foam solvers here, yeah. and there are uh, two other 3D solvers here for uh, boundary elements and for finite elements to calculate the electromagnetic induction and fields. Mm -hmm. And this part is this 2D solver here, I mean this part, yeah, this 2D solver which, which I presented on the previous slide. Yeah. So open foam is uh, actually this part. Yeah. Which open foam solvers do you use there? Uh, I, uh, this, this, this is not work, work by, done by me, but uh, they used incompressible fluid flow calculations. Yeah? And for the magnetic field, for DC fields, they needed to uh, solve a potential equation in the volume. Yeah, but it's basically it's in the <coughs> incompressible flow. These other codes are again in house codes, this 3D codes? Yes, 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 yes. For these, you also need some open source alternative, yeah, like, like Elmer maybe, if you, if you invest some work in Elmer. Yeah. Why exactly CISO was selected in order to define the Avogadro constant? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> well, silicon is one of the materials where you can actually achieve the highest uh, purity and the highest structural perfection. There are not many materials where you can really have a single crystal of macroscopic size. Yeah? For silicon, we have this technology because we have developed this technology for microelectronics for 50 years. Yeah? And therefore we, therefore, we could use this technology to produce such crystals. Yeah? But for other materials, it's very hard. The, any, the, the, the only other choice uh, which I know, which has also the same level of purity, is germanium. Yeah? But for germanium, you cannot produce so easily single crystals where you have all atoms at the perfect position. So the, so the choice is quite limited. So, if there are no more questions, thank you for the talk again. Yes, the last talk, uh, unfortunately, we didn't go to the same place because the speaker.
that's sick. And um, I'm not sure about the dinner. So yeah. do we have the earlier dinner or yeah. same time? Yeah. Yeah. Half past seven.